It seems as though we've found Nkanyeni herself. Well, it looks to me like it is Nkanyeni. And perhaps I'm mistaken, but she has got a certain look about her. She's beautiful. She's got a slightly, well, for how I remember her the last time I saw her, she has a slightly pinkish nose, which you can see she has there. And she's got three perfect spots. It looks like three spots on the left-hand side of her face. Isn't she beautiful? And we know that Nkanyeni also loves to climb marula trees. So I think that this is her. Not that uh, most leopards don't like to climb trees, but her favorite in particular is, of course, marula trees. But she's sat herself up nicely, shaded by all the lovely leaves, just a bit of dapple lighting on her body, not too much. And I wonder if she plans on heading back towards her son. Now, I've completely forgotten. Actually, I've never seen Votomi. How do you say his name here? Vutomi, I was saying it correctly, just double checking. I've never seen him before and I was really excited to see him and hopefully we will still see him a bit later. We'll try and go and have a look for him. But if I'm not mistaken, I think he's about 14 months. Does that sound about right to you, David? Somewhere around there. So it could be possible that uh, that she's decided that that's uh, the end of that and he needs to go off on his way. And it's always tough for young male leopards when they do go off on, on their own. And it's, it's not a, a transition, transition that you see straight away. It's normally quite a slow sort of process. So what will normally happen is they start to spend less and less time apart. And eventually, well, Votomi is going to have to move out of this area because I think it was the most incredible footage that Shanae got of quarantine in Nkanyeni. And we couldn't believe uh, the interaction that they had and how a quarantine didn't actually kill her cub, which was absolutely incredible. But the way that he was acting so submissively, oh, big yawn, could have possibly you know, sort of changed his mind. And, and, and because quarantine is such a young, inexperienced leopard still, he's still a baby himself, he probably didn't quite know what to do either. So Vutomi got very, very lucky in that situation. And, and hopefully he doesn't try it again, because I think... To have something like that happen to you and to come out of it alive is exceptionally lucky. Like I said, whether they in, or can't encounter each other a second time and he gets lucky again, well then he's an exceptionally lucky leopard. But it's going to be hard for him. He's going to have to eat tortoises, he's going to have to catch guinea fowl, monkeys, you know, smaller things that he might be able to go after. He's not going to jump straight into catching uh, Dacre and Steenbok and Impala. It'll take him a few months before he... He's sort, of, um, he's sort of able to do it. But in case you were worried that he is just feeding on tortoises at the moment, don't. It's, it's normal. I've seen many young male leopards just going from uh, shrub to shrub looking for tortoises that are hiding away. Oh, my gosh, isn't this amazing? Look how gracefully she comes down this tree. She's trying to choose her pathway now. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And straight towards us. She is a beautiful leopard, and I, this is the third time that I've seen her now. Is it? Yes, the third. Fourth time, I lie. Sorry, I've, I've told a fib there. The fourth time that I see her, and I, she's actually fast becoming one of my favorite leopards. The fact that she likes to climb trees as well is, is pretty amazing. Look at her. She's just keeping a close eye on us, so we'll make sure that we don't move around too much in the vehicle. It's okay, girl. Not quite as relaxed as what Karula is, or, or even quarantine. He doesn't seem to mind the vehicles too much. Just keeping a close eye, of course. But these vehicles can be quite daunting. Remember, uh, we do have a big camera and a big aerial on the back of them, so they're slightly different to a normal game viewer. Now, we need to try and get around here. Okay, I think we've got a route, a clear route. Because the way we came in, there were a couple of... Uh, uh, logs that were hidden in the ground that could cause a great distress to the vehicle. But now we need to follow her. David, are you ready? This is going to be exciting and this is one of the things that we have to do is when the animals move, well we do too, sorry David about the branches, but we'll try and keep up with her. So it seems as though she's disappeared just off the way from which we've came, so we need to go all the way around again. But I'm going to send you back across all the way to Juma with Byron. 
Rebecca, my love. Uh, anyways, I don't, we, we're having a bit of a, oh, sorry, where was I heard a bit of a delay there. Now, this is, looks like a rock monitor versus this leopard, and I know there's a couple of doubts at the moment as to whether this is Nkanyeni or not, or Kachuva, apparently Tandi's daughter. Now, I've never seen her. Oh, look at this. So we'll get to that at the moment, but this is just incredible. I've never seen a rock monitor versus a leopard before. Now, unfortunately, this monitor does not stand a chance. Look how she's swatting it. You can see it's trying to stand up to her by puffing its neck out, trying to raise its body. Now, they've got a nasty bite on them. Nasty, nasty, nasty bite. But they'll also use their tails to whip at each other. Uh, Harley, we're basically between central and then in line with three in a row pan itself. So if you can just come into that block exactly in line with three in a row pan and central, um, and then I'll get your audio and guide you in, but we slap bang in the middle. She, maybe Fugger Jumbo, she's trying to catch a rock monitor. Um, but like I said, be right in the block as soon as I get your audio, I'll guide you in. Sorry about that. Uh, this, obviously, this is an exceptionally exciting sighting, and one of the guides from Chitwa has been making his way here. Um, but it's quite a difficult spot that we've got ourselves into. We're in the middle of a block now, and I, I, obviously, I need your help here with identifying this leopard. I look at her and I see Nkanyeni, but I'm also very inexperienced with the leopards of the northern Asabi sands. I'm still learning them. But if I think, I think I, I'm probably wrong here because I think Inkanyeni has a four-five spot pattern, if I'm not mistaken, from the last time. I have to check my book again. But if this is Tandy's cub, I, I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know about her. So I'd really appreciate some information. Maybe her age. She doesn't look particularly old. Um, maybe some um, information where she likes to normally traverse. Because, like I said, this is the first time that I've ever heard of her, and. This is the first time I've ever seen a leopard taking on a rock monitor. I think I mentioned that, but this is super exciting. And I don't know what she's going to do. I mean, obviously the rock monitor is very angry, but I think this monitor knows that if it runs, like the one thing that you don't do in the bush is that you do not run because you would draw attention to yourself. And if this thing starts to make a great escape, I think it's going to be in a lot of trouble. Whereas if it perhaps maybe stands its ground and makes a slow getaway, it probably has a better chance. If it just backs itself up maybe towards a burrow, something like that, where, where this leopard wouldn't be able to, to get it. But this is honestly exceptional. That leopard is ten times the size, probably even more uh, larger than the rock monitor. But look at it. Did you see that? Did you see how it used its tail? They use it like a whip. It's very sharp, uh, and I've been—I have held a rock monitor before. This was when I was—it uh, was a rehabilitated rock monitor at a, a rehabilitation center down in the Eastern Cape. And if I, that that tail is dangerous, and you can see this leopard has had enough now, not sticking around. I think that tail whip was the end of it for her. Wasn't that amazing? But she's hunting. She's looking for something, and I'm sure she'd prefer a Stienbok or a Comendeka or an Impala. As, as if this was Votomi, he would have definitely killed this rock monitor. Because for him, he is not quite experienced in hunting just yet. And of course, that would have proven to be a much tastier snack than that rock monitor. But you can see the relief now. You got very lucky, very, very lucky. Now you better make a quick skedaddle in case she decides to come back for you. Still angry, still puffing itself out, hissing. I don't know if you could hear the hissing, it's quite faint. And we're a little bit away from it. But very, very, very angry. That was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. That is one of the best leopard sightings I've had, that whole interaction. 
I think she could have spotted something too, the way that she was sitting so still on that mound. So we'll just give her a bit of time to examine what's going on on the other side of the termite mound and then we'll go around. I'm quite excited to see what this rock monitor does. Now, earlier I mentioned to you that the rock monitors and the water monitors have a nasty bite on them. And it's not because they have a venom or anything, it's just because they feed on the most revolting things and there's a lot of bacteria in their mouth. And, and driver, you're actually saying if, uh, if she were to have got bitten by this uh, rock monitor, would she have, you know, been affected by the infection? She could have, but remember, the cats and all the animals out here are exceptionally well adapted to dealing with infections and disease. So I think she would have been okay. She probably would have uh, licked the wound and kept it nice and clean. And then she would have been fine. But if you or I to, to get bitten something, uh, by something like this and we weren't to keep it clean, we were just to sort of leave it fester, you could end up with a serious infection. I mean, look at this thing. It looks like something out of a movie. It, I always think that the rock monitors remind me of Godzilla a little bit. Just they're sort of, uh, they're very robust rather than, not as, not quite as slender as, of course, uh, the water monitors. But we're going to have to keep moving forward because I can't see this, this leopard's tail. So I'd like to hear from you. Of course, we're still trying to work out who this leopard is. Maybe you can send in some photos and of, if you have some photos of her, and then Rebecca can send them to me and I can have a quick look. Uh, just because I've never, like I said, I've never, I've never seen um, Tandy's daughter before and I don't know much about her. Please don't say she's done a little slipperoo. No, she's still sitting here. She going back again? Yes.